Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another Victoria video and today I'm going to be talking about some great short Victorian reads. So, unlike the books I'm going to be talking about today, this video is not going to be very short. I have a huge list of Victorian works of literature that are under 250 pages for you today. All of these I have read and really enjoyed and definitely recommend. I think when a lot of us think of a Victorian book, we think of this. But this is not what all Victorian books are. The Victorians actually wrote a lot of novellas as well. Um, and there are a lot of fantastic Victorian books that are really quite short and are easy to get to in a day or two. So we're going to get straight into the books. First, I want to recommend Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. These are two very short novels and um, most editions with both of them together are under 250 pages and individual editions of them are even shorter. These are two very weird books following um, a young girl called Alice who gets caught up and sucked into a weird world where everything is a bit odd. They're very dreamlike, very surreal, very nonsensical, but very, very good fun. Next, I want to recommend Dickens's Christmas books. So Dickens wrote five Christmas books over the course of his writing career, which always came out like a few days before Christmas. A Christmas Carol is obviously the most famous of those, but he also released The Battle of Life, The Cricket on the Hearth, The Chimes and The Haunted Man. Some of these are much more Christmassy than others. The Battle of Life and The Cricket on the Hearth are called the Christmas books because they were released shortly before Christmas but they're not very Christmassy um, and then The Chimes is more like a New Year story and The Haunted Man is a bit Christmassy too um, but not like as Christmassy as A Christmas Carol by any means. All five of these books are under um, like 150 pages. They're really short, they're really quick and easy, they're so fun and so good. A Christmas Carol you will all have heard of. Um, it follows um, a man called Scrooge who is not very nice and what happens when he gets visited by various ghosts who tell him to maybe be a bit nicer. The Battle of Life follows the relationships between a family over the course of many years. The Cricket on the Hearth follows a newly married couple um, and their relationship. The Times follows a man who kind of like is able to see into possible futures on New Year's Eve and The Haunted Man follows a man who has made a deal with a ghost um, to forget all of the misery and suffering in his pasts which leads him to be unable to empathise. So five books with fascinating premises, all really short, all really engaging and all really good. I did a like Dickens Christmas author week um, a year ago? Maybe two years ago, I can't remember when it was, um, but I will link that little playlist down below if you'd like to know more about Dickens's Christmas books. Next I want to recommend The Rebecca Rioter by Amy Dillwyn. This is a short Victorian novel of about 180 pages and this follows a young man um, living in Wales and his kind of friendship with a young lady who lives nearby who is of a much higher class than him and also what happens when he gets caught up in The Rebecca Rioters. And the Rebecca riots were real things that happened in um, early 19th century Wales where um, working class men protested by dressing up as women. Um, it's a long story that's more complicated than that, but this is going to be a very long video if I spend too much time on it. So yeah, this book is great. Would highly, highly recommend. I especially enjoy the way it looks at 19th century Wales and um, kind of class relationships within 19th century Wales and how class lines are kind of drawn more firmly by the fact that upper class people in Wales at this time speak English and lower class people speak Welsh. Next, I want to mention the novella Carmilla by J. Sheridan Le Fanu. This is usually about 100, 120 pages depending on the edition. This is a fantastic vampire gothic novel which focuses on a young woman called Laura and what happens when another young woman starts to live with her. A young woman called Carmilla who is mysterious and very attractive and very very pale with quite sharp teeth. It is a fantastic novella, very very dramatic and exciting, really well done. I love Laura's character and the relationship between her and Carmilla which is very romanticised and sexualised as well. I would say um, lots of lesbian under tones here is really really well done. Next I want to mention the shorter works of Elizabeth Gaskell. Elizabeth Gaskell is one of my favourite Victorian writers and along with her longer novels she wrote a lot of fantastic novellas. So many that I'm not going to talk about them all today but I will link down below my um, two weeks of Elizabeth Gaskell thing that I did um, 
a year ago, I think, possibly two years ago, where I went through all of Gaskell's um, novellas and novels for two weeks. But there are five short books by Gaskell that I want to mention today. That's still quite a lot, I know. Um, and there are some missing, so yeah. One is Cranford. This is her most famous shorter work. Cranford is usually about 220 pages, though often it has other shorter works like published in the same edition, um, which follows a youngish woman who goes to stay with some elderly friends of hers who live in a town of Cranford. And basically we follow this female community in the town of Cranford where there are a lot of um, late middle-aged to elderly ladies who um, basically run the town in a way. They are the most important people in the town and they are like the highest class people in the town and we follow their lives um, and their economies and their idea of, of themselves. Cranford is hilarious and wonderful. It's such a fantastic exploration of community and like um, female communities, especially in the Victorian period, would highly, highly recommend. I would also very much recommend Mr. Harrison's Confessions. This is pretty short. It's usually about like 80 to 100 pages. It tells the story of a young man, a surgeon, um, who comes to this new town um, and he is very well-meaning and a little bit oblivious, which means that um, he ends up raising expectations and hopes of more women in the town than he intended to. Um, it's very, very funny, very, very silly, um, but really, really fantastic, and also includes a lot of like really interesting stuff about the medical profession in the 19th century. I would also very much recommend The Moorland Cottage, which is another fantastic Gaskell novella, um, and this, I think, is, um, yeah, just like 140 pages. This tells the story of a girl called Maggie in her relationship with her brother, um, who is not a very nice person, and also with um, a young man who lives in the house nearby. It is fantastic, it is brilliant, it is so well done. The way this looks at like sibling relationships is brilliant. I just, I love it a lot. I would also highly recommend A Dark Knight's Work, which is such a fantastic Gaskell um, work. This is usually about 128 pages, it's not very long at all, but it tells the story of a young woman um, and her life and everything seems to be going fine. She lives with her father, she's just falling in love with this young man and then one night her father does something um, which changes their lives forever and it gets like super dramatic and crazy. It's so good. Would highly recommend. I would also very much recommend Lois the Witch, also by Gaskell. This is um, about 94 pages and this is a historical Victorian book set in the um, 17th century in America. Lois is a young woman um, who, after the death of her parents, travels from England to America to stay with some relatives who live in Salem and gets caught up in the Salem witch trials. It is fantastic and I would highly recommend it. I would also highly recommend Diary of a Nobody by George and Whedon Grossmith. This is 176 pages and it is hilarious. It is set up as the fictional diary of this man um, who is a clerk, he's kind of lower middle class, and he wants to be more upper slash middle middle class than he is. So a lot of this book is his like escapades trying to be more respectable than he is. It's very, very funny, very, very silly, um, and just, yeah, I would highly, highly recommend it. It's such good fun. Another short Victorian book is Under the Greenwood Tree by Thomas Hardy. This is 218 pages, the only Thomas Hardy novel making it onto this list. The rest of his are a little bit longer. Under the Greenwood Tree tells the story of Fancy Day, yes, that is her name, and she she um, becomes a school teacher, moves into this particular town and attracts the attention of various men around her. It is a good fun read. Um, the ending is really interesting. Um, it's slightly less like miserable on the surface than other Thomas Hardy novels. Um, it's a good one, I would recommend. I would also very much recommend Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome. This is about 185 pages and this is in a very similar style to Diary of a Nobody. It's very, very similar kind of Victorian comic novel. And we follow three men um, who go on a boat um, up and down the Thames. Um, they think they know what they're doing, but they don't really know what they're doing and they get into some difficulties and it's very, very good fun. I also have some Margaret Oliphant to recommend you. I would very much recommend The Rector, which is the first um, like instalment of her Carlingford Chronicles, which is a series of interconnected novellas and novels. The Rector is a novella which is very short and it, I think it's about 50, 60 pages. Um, and it follows the new rector of Carlingford, um, this young man who arrives 
um, in the parish and finds that his new life is not exactly what he thought it would be. And then another thing I would highly recommend by Margaret Oliphant is this. This is Queen Eleanor and Fair Rosamond and the Mystery of Mrs. Blencaro. Um, so this is two novellas in here. So both novellas together is um, like 198 pages. The Mystery of Mrs. Blencaro is a great novella following a woman called Mrs. Blencaro and something mysterious that may happen in her life. But Queen Eleanor and Fair Rosamond is still my favourite thing that I've ever read by Margaret Oliphant. It follows um, the marriage of a particular couple and what happens when um, the wife starts to see a lot less of her husband um, and think something slightly odd is going on there. It's so brilliant, it's so well done, so so good. Would highly highly recommend. I would also recommend Garth Owen by Alan Rain. This is 204 pages. This is a novel set in Wales following a particular family and their relationship with those around them, including a dairy maid um, who works on their farm, who both sons of the family um, have expressed romantic interest in at various points. It's really really interesting, very compelling, really interesting look at Wales in the Victorian period and also at kind of class um, and how class operated slightly differently in Wales to England in the Victorian period. I'd also highly recommend The Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is 144 pages. Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde are obviously like quite well-known figures within popular culture but if you haven't read the original I really would. Um, it tells the story a little bit removed of um, a man called Dr Jekyll and what happens when one of his scientific experiments goes a little bit wrong. It's so interesting in terms of like ideas about class in the Victorian period, ideas about morality, ideas about like evolution and degeneration, would highly highly recommend. On to some Anthony Trollope, two very short Anthony Trollope books I would recommend. One is Dr Wirtle's School, which is a fantastic book by him, 220 pages. Um, it follows a man called Dr Wirtle who runs school and what happens when he discovers the secret of a married couple who work for him. It is so compelling, so good, um, I love it so much. It's so well done and so interesting in terms of the way it looks at like Victorian ideas about morality. Um, it's a really like just such good Trollope. Trollope at his best. A really good introduction to Trollope, a really good place to start with Anthony Trollope. Like such an interesting social examination of Victorian ideas um, and really short as well. And then I would also very much recommend The Warden. Um, this is about 233 pages. This is the first book in the Barsetshire Chronicles. The length of this little book is not representative of the length of the rest of the Barsetshire Chronicles, which are all pretty chunky. Um, and this tells the story of a man called Dr Harding. He is the warden and the clergyman um, of this place which is called a hospital and it's basically an old people's home um, or the Victorian equivalent. He has done this job for years, he's paid to do this job and this book follows what happens when someone says maybe he shouldn't be paid to do this job and maybe the money that's going to him to do this job should actually be going to the people in the old people's home. So interesting, so good, would highly highly recommend. Next I have some HG Wells to recommend you. HG Wells is brilliant at writing a short book. My favourite um, book by HG Wells is Love and Mr Lewisham. This is 229 pages, it's one of his realist works, not one of his science fiction works and it follows um, a man called Mr Lewisham um, who is training to be a teacher who is trying to raise himself from his upbringing into kind of the middle class and what happens when his romantic relationships get in the way of that. It's so so good, would highly recommend. I'd also highly recommend um, The Time Machine which is 118 pages, another one of H.G. Wells most famous science fiction works following a man who invents a time machine um, and travels forward in time to a place where humankind has like diverged into two different races um, which are kind of like symbolic of upper and working classes um, stretch to a whole new level. It's fascinating, really really interesting if you're interested in like Victorian class um, and analogies for it, I would highly recommend. I'd also highly recommend The Island of Dr Moreau. This is another H.G. Wells science fiction novel, it's 150 pages and it follows a man who ends up stranded on this island with a man called Dr Moreau who is doing weird scientific experiments. Um, it's really good, it's very creepy, but I would highly, highly recommend it. Then the final um, one in my like novel slash novella part of this video, there's still plays and poetry and little black classics to go, um, I have The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, and um, this is 240 pages um, or thereabouts. This is a fantastic novel, it tells the story of a man called Dorian Gray. Dorian Gray um, gets a portrait painted of him early on in the book, and basically the premise of this book is that like Dorian Gray doesn't age, he doesn't grow old, the lifestyle that he leads takes no toll on his body but it does take a toll on his portrait and Dorian Gray is kind of like corrupted by the people around him 
over the course of this amazing gothic book. As well as wonderful Victorian novellas and short novels, I would highly recommend some Victorian plays. My two favourite Victorian playwrights are George Bernard Shaw and Oscar Wilde. My favourite George Bernard Shaw play is Mrs Waring's Profession, although I also really enjoy Widower's Houses. He writes fantastically about um, social issues and the position of women within late Victorian society and about like class as well and money. Like the way he explores money is just fantastic. I would highly, highly recommend his plays. They're all very short and like most plays will not take you very much time to read at all. And then Oscar Wilde writes some brilliant plays. Um, the Importance of Being Earnest and A Woman of No Importance are my two favourites and we are, during Victoria, hosting read-alongs of them. One of them might already be done, I don't know when I'm going to post this video, um, but yeah, hopefully some of you will be reading those this month. The Importance of Being Earnest follows a man called Jack and a man called Algernon, both of whom at various points of this book pretend to be called Ernest for reasons of their own, and A Woman of No Importance follows um, a woman and her son and what happens when that son gets involved with people who she doesn't want him to get involved in because of certain things in her past. It's fantastic and so feminist and so good in so many ways. I also love Lady Windermere's fan and an ideal husband. Um, like Oscar Wilde just writes fantastic plays. I love them so 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 much and I really cannot recommend them enough. He's so witty. Like his wit is just supreme um, and I love the way he writes dialogue. So so good. Going from um, the quite short to the very very short, I would like to recommend some Victorian poets for you um, if you would like to read a very short or pretty short poem. Some of my favourite Victorian poets um, would include Christina Rossetti who writes brilliantly, like really really powerful and um, compelling really interesting things and quite a lot about like gender dynamics within the Victorian period. I also love Edward Lear, very very different. He writes nonsense poems but they are really really good fun, however silly they may be. I also really like Tennyson um, and both Elizabeth Barrett Browning and Robert Browning who both write really powerful poems. I also love the poems of the Brontes and um, the Bronte sisters write really fantastic poetry and the way they look at landscape is really great. And I also love Gerald Manley Hopkins um, who writes wonderfully about the natural world with such a distinctive writing style. Finally um, there's some poetry and some other bits and pieces in here. I have um, some Penguin Little Black Classics to recommend you. All of the books in this range by Penguin Classics are about one or two quid. They're um, usually between 50 and 100 pages. They're really short like introductions to an author's work. Some of them are short stories, some of them are poems, some of them are bits of non-fiction or extracts from longer things um, and they're all really fantastic. So these are all the Victorian ones that I own which I can go through for you. Firstly as Kingfisher's Catch Fire, some Gerald Manley Hopkins poetry. Um, like I said I really love Gerald Manley Hopkins. I just think he writes so brilliantly. I also have some Edward Lear nonsense poetry in here um, who I just mentioned too. Then some short stories I have here. This is The Great Winglebury Jewel by Charles Dickens. I think there's a couple of other um, short stories in here as well. Yes, there's two short stories in here, both of which I really enjoy. It's really, really good fun um, little Dickens stories. This is The Old Nurse's Story by Elizabeth Gaskell. I think there's another short story in here too. The Old Nurse's Story and Curious If True. Both of these are like little supernaturally gothic-y short stories stories which are really good fun and I highly recommend. I'd also recommend Lord Arthur Sackville's Crime by Oscar Wilde which is another kind of like gothic but also quite witty comedic little short story which I really enjoyed. Then we also have A Slip Under the Microscope by H.G. Wells and um, this is actually the first thing I ever read by H.G. Wells. There's two short stories in here the door in the wall um, and a slip under the microscope which I really really enjoyed. Um, they're really really good fun and really interesting. And then we have To Be Read at Dusk by Charles Dickens which is another couple of short stories. Um, yes, including The Signalman and, um, um, and The Trial for Murder as well. The Signalman is I think probably Dickens' most famous short stories and these are a bit like mysterious and ghostly too. And then we have The Withered Arm by Thomas Hardy, a few more kind of gothic-y things. Well, The Withered Arm is quite gothic, I'm trying to remember what else is in here. The Thieves Who Couldn't Stop Sneezing, I have no recollection of reading that, though I definitely did. I definitely recommend The Withered Arm though. And then here is Green Tea by J. Sheridan Le Fanu. This is another little gothic short story, really fantastic and really compelling. I really, really do recommend it. And here is Sandcliffe's Hotel by Charlotte Bronte. This is a piece of Charlotte Bronte's juvenalia set in this mythical world that she invented with her siblings. This is slightly weird. Um, I think this is something to read if you've read lots of Charlotte Bronte and want to read more rather than a good place to begin with Charlotte Bronte because it's a little bit hard to follow um, but it's really good fun and really interesting to kind of see her writing develop at her young age.
The Little Black Classics also include like some extracts from non-fiction works. It Was Snowing Butterflies by Charles Darwin is um, some extracts from Charles Darwin's writing, which is really interesting. Um, and Off Street Pyman is some extracts from Henry Mayhew's writing. Um, he writes a lot about kind of class and poverty within London. And finally, um, this slightly miscellaneous one is um, Only Dull People Are Brilliant at Breakfast by Oscar Wilde, which is just like funny quotes from Oscar Wilde. It's just like wit. Just just the book full of wit. It's, re it's actually a really, really fun read. I like Wagner's music better than anybody's. It is so loud that one can talk the whole time without people hearing what one says. Literature always anticipates life. It does not copy it, but moulds it to its purpose. The 19th century, as we know it, is largely an invention of Balzac. That's a lot of very short Victorian books. Um, in a very long Victorian video. <laughs> I hope this video has been interesting and useful and that you got some good recommendations of some short Victorian books to try. Please let me know down in the comments if you have any other short Victorian reads to recommend and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.